We filmed over 80 videos at SHOT Show 2023. They're still being published on TFP TV Showtime until February 1st. I'm talking nearly all of them on Showtime. We only published a handful of SHOT videos to this, the TFB TV main channel. Please go to Showtime, subscribe. The last videos from the show are going to be running until the end of the month. Let me paint a picture for you. I'm in Belgrade in a hot tub under the Hotel Moscow with a huge Serbian dude. He says, James, I want you to take a look at this thing. I'm relieved slightly when my buddy Ranko produces his phone from under his towel and shows me ATF import approval for the M70 underfolder, which Ranko told me he would release at SHOT Show 2023. Totally true story, by the way, not even kidding. Is the underfolder M70 really different than the regular M70 other than having an underfolder stock? No, and that's a good thing. Zostava has to comply with 922R, a federal rule that requires imported rifles to have certain features and a specific number of American parts installed. Zostava only installs American compliance parts outside of the receiver. No U.S. internals or barrels, so you're getting a mechanically true Zostava AK. In 2022, Zostava made an underfolder stock adapter that would allow you to install an underfolder stock with a standard M70, but of course, the first question on everyone's mind was when are the real underfolders coming out? That is, guns with underfolder trunnions. Now you know. I've said in the past I'd rather French kiss my dad than shoot a case of ammo through an underfolder, but I know you Kalashnikovs out there are going to love this iconic rifle, so it's number six. Number five. Bit of a tough one for me. Um, don't really like old guns. I don't really like old-fashioned guns. Wood furniture's heavy. It's inferior to polymer. Optic installation sucks. Ergonomics and controls are usually pointless. Ammo can be hard to get, magazines even harder, super expensive, no threaded barrels for suppressors, crap sights, I could go on and on, they're just inefficient. Number five on the list is, <laughs> number five on the list is, <sighs> number five on the list is a Henry, the Henry Homesteader, this gilf of a gun is the biggest FUD gateway drug of all time, that's right, Henry famous for lever action cowboy rifles and discounts for AARP members, made a gun that I actually found to be pretty interesting. It attracts the classic curious because it's got modern features like being chambered in a relevant round, easy to get magazines that are cheap, the ability to put a piece of glass on top of the receiver so you stop missing shit at the range, 9mm taking Glock mags, the ability to mount an optic, a suppressor, and they call it the Homesteader, which is funny. Kind of whimsical, kind of an old-timey, fun name for it. It looks the part, too. Very docile in appearance with a traditional aesthetic. In fact, if someone broke into your house and saw you pointing this gun at them, they might be right to assume that you were holding them up with a Red Ryder BB gun or something until you homestead the f*** out of their face with a titty mag of 9mm plus P. The Homesteader is a simple, traditional, straightforward blowback, pistol caliber carbine. It's going to cost less than a thousand bucks, and it looks like it could have been used by your grandfather to install canoe racks and Nazi skulls in the 1940s. It's handsome, it's cool, it captures the Henry zeitgeist, but it's still a practical, useful carbine that could be absolutely fantastic for home defense, right? For a lot of people who can't own or don't want an AR-15 in the house, but maybe a 12 gauge is a little bit too much. We'll see. Review is on the way. Hopefully, I've got one coming to TFB TV. All right, time for number four, the controversy slot. This one always riles people up. Controversy slot this year. I'm not sure if this thing is a practical joke or a practical firearm, but damn if this silly ass AR-10 from Olympus Arms didn't tickle my battle rifle balls a little bit. It's range day. This dude runs up and grabs me. Camera's rolling. Allegedly lighter recoiling 308 than 556. Let's have a look. And he's like, hey man, how'd you like to shoot an AR-10 that has less recoil than an AR-15? In my mind, I'm thinking bullshit. But how could I say no to that? This is a win-win-win for me. One, I get to shoot a gun. Win. Two, either this guy brings me over to an AR-10 with like a rubber buffer and like a braided buffer spring and I ass blast him on camera for the scam 
or he's actually right and I stumble upon something kind of cool. And that's what happened here. Okay, no shit, that might be true. No shit, that, that actually, that is kind of cool. You definitely feel the concussion, you feel you know, that you're shooting a more powerful round, but it, it, it's some kind of weird, it, the, the recoil sensation is, is, the impulse is weird. That's right, it's soft. It's, it, it's so effect. strange. This is an AR-10 with less recoil than an AR-15, 100%, absolutely. The Olympus AR-10 has a barrel that reciprocates back and forth about five and a half inches, and in that process, it sucks all the recoil out of 7.62 NATO and gently places the brass at your feet. It's pretty wild. Now this is technology borrowed from the semi-auto Barrett 50 cal sniper rifles like the M82 that have reciprocating barrels as well to reduce recoil. Not quite bolt action accurate, but I've read claims that one MOA is attainable with match ammo and a reciprocating barrel 50. I don't know if this gun's that accurate, but it could be. I also don't know if this rifle's reliable either, but I don't know that it isn't. What I do know is that a natural Florida man, it's very easy to impress me with pyrotechnics, double Ds, or in this case, a magic trick. So the David Copperfield AR-10 just vanished the Statue of Liberty into the number four slot. Number three, I guess, has to be the STG-44 from Palmetto State Armory. I don't know shit about it. I have zero interest in owning a replica of a bulky obsolete assault rifle that's probably going to cost more than a good AK, and I don't get it. However, all the Veraboos out there are clearly jacked about this thing because Hobbs' video from SHOT Show 2023 is the most watched video on TFB Showtime. Not at SHOT 2023, I'm talking of all time, since 2019, and by a huge margin. So yeah, this is my list, but I still try to keep an open mind and I can't ignore the STG-44. It was clearly the Volk's choice of SHOT Show 2023 and is the most hyped gun we've ever covered at any show, so congratulations to PSA. Number two, and maybe I should have saved this one for the controversy slot. I own one lever action firearm. I bought it for a promo video. Hold on one second, I'll go get it. Yeah, so I was saying I own one lever action firearm. I bought this for a promo video that I actually never filmed. I've had it for two years, I've never shot it. But damn if I'm about to get my second lever action and actually bring it to the range. Gordon Bond of Bond Arms dropped one of the biggest releases at the show, the Bond Arms Lever AR-15, which is yet to be named, but maybe they just call it the Lev AR? Lev Bar? It sounds like a novelty, in a way it is, but it's not just a novelty either. If you watch the video on Showtime, this is an extremely well thought out, high quality, functional rendition of a lever gun. Bond Arms could have made headlines just by turning out some barely functional piece of shit lever action AR-15 that wasn't really an AR-15, but instead they made this version with excellent fit and finish, the ability to accept Remington 870 stocks, the ability to change out the lever loop to accommodate your stock or your personal preferences, a cam system that makes the lever throw short and easy, and most importantly, the ability to mount almost any AR-15 upper on the thing. Now, a lot of you are saying right now, James, haven't you spent half the list trashing impractical firearms? Yes, yes I have. But the Lev AR, Lev R, has an attraction to me as someone who loves 300 Blackout, and I really don't want it for any other reason than to shoot 300 Blackout. 300 Blackout, the ultimate suppressed round for the AR platform with the ability to shoot full power subsonic loads that are extremely quiet. I have a Ruger American Bolt Action. You guys have seen that video. 300 Blackout. Love this damn thing. It's accurate. It's handy. Most importantly, there's no action noise and no sound coming out of the ejection port, making it truly movie gun quiet with a good suppressor. The Lev AR has the potential to outperform even my beloved Ruger American. Both of them use AR mags, which is cool. But the Lev AR will be faster, right, to use the action. 
And I can change the caliber and the barrel length at will with two push pins. Hell, I already own dozens of uppers that'll pin right onto this lower and go, so do you. This is simply brilliant. It'll be an excellent suppressor host gun, especially with a 9 inch 300 blackout barrel on it. Think about it. I'm trying to get one for review, so stay tuned, Space Cowboys. Now for number one, and I could be totally off base with this, so I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments. It's pretty clear that over the past year and a half or two, I've become a Beretta fanboy after the tremendous performance of the Beretta 1301 shotgun during a brutal weekend combat shotgun course at Thunder Ranch almost two years ago. After that, I reviewed the Mannerin MR73 revolver, the PX4 Storm, then there's my experience with the Beretta 84, which I now own two of, the new APX A1, and then I say the 80X was the best handgun at shot 2023. Well, here's another gold medal for Beretta. We're talking the Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol. Without question, there's been a run on Beretta 1301s over the past couple of years because it's arguably the best tactical shotgun in the game right now. Head nod to the Mossberg 940 Tactical, but prices continue to rise on an already pricey Italian 1301. Beretta does a fantastic job at listening to its customers. Customers have been asking for a shotgun with the reliability of the 1301, but without the hefty price tag of the 1301. They delivered this year with the A300 Ultima Patrol. The Patrol is Beretta's newest semi-automatic tactical shotgun. You get the Beretta performance and reliability you want, but the Patrol is going to be made in the U.S., and it's going to come in at under $1,000 street price. It's got an MSRP of $410 less than the 1301. Obviously, there are differences which I'll get to at a later date because I've got the patrol at my FFL right now and you're getting a detailed review and torture test. The 1301 uses the much faster blank gas system, which is pretty amazing. It's also three quarters of a pound lighter than the patrol, but it still manages to have a similar recoil impulse. But the patrol is going to be really, really tough to beat for the dollar. You get tactical 1301 furniture, including the M-Lock handguard, 7-round shot tube, barrel clamp with QD sling points, more M-Lock up there, fiber optic ghost ring sights, and unlike most versions of the 1301, the patrol's ready to roll out of the box just by a flashlight, a blue force gear sling, and shotgun cards. You're done. Hell, you don't even need to buy industrial 3M loop tape for your shotgun cards because Beretta is wisely accepting Velcro shotgun cards as the new meta over hard side saddle shell holders, and they include a strip of industrial loop with the patrol, which is pretty funny. Yeah, you can rig out your 1301 this way. I have, and you have a lighter, faster, better performing shotgun than the A300 patrol. However, the A300 has a huge edge on the 1301 in one area, and that is its beveled loading port. The 1301 loading port's good, but the oversized beveled loading port in the patrol is excellent, makes loading the patrol faster, easier, and more comfy if you're not wearing gloves. And one last pro, the Patrol also comes in this sick black and gray Tiger Stripe limited edition finish. I pray this is the review copy I was sent, but we'll see when I get to the FFL, I guess. Stay tuned for that review. Gang, we love sharing SHOT Show 2023 with you. Make sure you go over to TFB TV Showtime and subscribe. We've got videos running until 11.59 p.m. That's the last video being published, 11.59 p.m. on January 31st. Not to mention, you guys, I heard you in the comments to the last video, I am going to do a top 10 non-gun items from SHOT Show, and that video is only going to be on TFB TV Showtime, so you have to go over there to check it out. But thanks as usual for watching. Take care.